thanks for the introduction. Um, you know, I, I think I need to change my profile to kind of remove some of those uh, very old elements. Uh, uh, I've, I've got probably the most undigital of all presentations. I don't have slides, no PowerPoint, just a few cue cards, okay? Uh, about uh, two months ago when uh, Ram asked me whether I would be open to hosting this session, uh, I said absolutely, and I grabbed the opportunity for a good reason. Uh, this is my chance to have five of our customers waiting to take <laughs> questions from me, and I don't have to answer anything, right? So, uh, so I'm honored, privileged, and extremely excited to host this session, Marketing Masters. We all agree uh, that with all the emerging uh, new technologies, there's a lot that's changing, changing uh, right in front of our eyes. Like somebody said this morning, one of the speakers, uh, the way we consume content, such as news, is, is undergoing a revolution right now. Okay, from a simple in-home viewing experience to a live, on-the-go tweeting experience, it is uh, changing quite dramatically. Watching TV is no longer an activity in isolation where the medium gets all the attention. I think a lot of us are used to having our phones in our hands while we watch TV. We are texting, we are answering emails, we are browsing the web. So this entire second screen, third screen phenomenon is completely changing the way consumers are engaging, even with the most established media like television. And that has some significant implications to all the brands. <coughs> Consumer buying behavior is changing a lot. Uh, I think we've, we all know, we've seen the traditional marketing funnel is getting ripped apart completely. You know, the whole purchase cycle today is far more complex where people are seeking a ton of information before they actually make their decisions on what to purchase. There was a time when you could just beam your latest TV ad and hope that you can create the awareness and preference for your brand in a short period of time. Now, the consumers aren't just simply recipients of your marketing messages. They aren't just waiting to hear whatever story you have to tell. They are creators of your brand message, they are curators, they are propagators of your brand message, and that's completely changing the implications for marketers. <clears throat> a year ago, at the same event, Everybody called 2010 the year of tablets. Okay, it was the first time a tablet was launched in 2010. Now what, exactly one year later, in Q4 last year, iPad shipments overtook the largest PC maker in the world, HP. Okay? So what's fascinating is not the fact that there is change, but the pace at which this change is actually taking place. So the, and, and that's really what makes this entire digital medium so exciting, fascinating, intriguing, and challenging. And that's what makes sharing experiences in forums like AdTech actually so critical. So on that note, I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you. I know many of you in this room are big evangelists of this medium. There are senior leaders from the Indian industry here and equally, there are young professionals who are beginning to make a mark, and there are entrepreneurs who are dreaming big. So this is a great opportunity for all of us to exchange our ideas and shape the future of this medium. Uh, we have a great lineup of uh, speakers, uh, each of them respected for their own uh, unique expertise. Like uh, Namita mentioned, each of them will make a presentation, a brief one, uh, strictly 15 minutes, plus five minutes of uh, time for a couple of questions. So we will take at the end of each presentation one or two questions from the audience. Uh, and at the, at, at the end of all the five presentations, if time permits, we will have an interactive panel discussion where you can have a lot more questions to all the speakers. So let me start by inviting our first speaker of the session. Uh, he represents uh, India's most loved brand and around the world. Uh, he's uh, playing a big part in the revolution of mobile business in India. Let's welcome Viral Oza, Chief Marketing Officer, Nokia.
Okay, I hope, yep, it's working. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, since Arun gave me the privilege of taking the first presentation of this graveyard shift, probable graveyard shift, um, I had two choices. One was to kind of throw lots of numbers and figures and, and, and give you a reason to fall asleep, or uh, keep it very simple, um, straightforward, and just set the context, if you will, for uh, some of my colleagues to then take it on from there. So what I'm going to cover is very simply uh, my perspective on why digital, yeah? What's, what's the big deal about digital? Um, what's the question, the dilemma, the challenge that marketers face? Uh, and, you know, what Nokia's take is on it with a very, very short, small example. Uh, just to give you an idea. And uh, then the colleagues will build on that with their uh, presentations, their examples. Um, yeah. So I consciously say digital is a part of life. Yeah? I don't say it's a way of life. And there's a difference. Um, the difference is it is becoming very, very important in people's lives. But it's not all of their lives. Yeah? There may be very important milestones that happen through the medium in their lives, but there is more to it. And let's take a very, very simple use case, yeah? Purchase behavior. There, are, there is an offline process, there is a possible online process, and there are multiple combinations in which consumers navigate this. And therefore, from that perspective, it's not just online, nor is it just offline anymore. And that's really one part of the challenge, which is it is a whole in its entirety. And essentially, if you operate in just one part of the process, be it only online or only offline, you're operating in possibly one way to purchase. But more importantly, you're not part of the process that a consumer follows. So you're there in part of the process, not there in part of the process, which is probably more dangerous. So let's look at how this came to be. Yeah? Not so much how or where it is. It's, I think, talking of challenges, this is one of the challenges that, uh, that faces the digital medium. Uh, if you take the online, offline medium, be it television, print, whatever, warts and all, issues and all, but there is one standard source of data. There is one standard measure that marketers can look at to evaluate what they should do. And I think one of the challenges in digital is there are so many sources of data. Um, I can kind of quote 65 million and be right, and I can quote 125 million and be right still. But let's take an average. There are about 100 million people in the online space. Yeah? More than 75% of them are young. Yeah? Some numbers there, school kids, college kids, young men, well, I'm sure they use this in a larger context, but this is the reality. One of the challenges of India is marketers look at numbers and say, only 100 million. Yeah? But 100 million is nearly twice the population of UK. So if you were a marketer in UK, you wouldn't be saying only 100 million. Yeah? So that's one part of it. The other part of it is not just the numbers and how many of the youngsters are there, but it is the implication that this has on brands. If you look at this, more than 30% of consumers, so 30% of consumers use it for accessing information, 40% actually make referrals. Yeah, they convert it into referrals, and 30% of them actually recommend a brand. Now, if, if you take the traditional brand pyramid, this is practically equal to loyalty. Uh, why do I say that? Because as we know, getting advice and tips from friends, family, etc., is becoming one of the biggest things. Consumers trust that more than advertising. And if a third of people online are actually recommending brands, products, whatever services, that is the kind of power it is generating. Sure, we can still say only 100 million, but that's still a large number. So 
it's the youngsters and it's how they engage with the brands. Now let's step back for a moment. And as a marketer, if I was to ask myself, what is it that's going to keep my brand going? What is it that lets my brand succeed year after year after year? It's one simple thing, relevance. Relevance to my consumer, relevance in their lives, a clear role in their life. And if we look at the Indian demographic today, yeah, we all know the numbers, 50% you know, less than 25 years of age, a third of them less than 18 years of age, and put those two things together. This is my demographic. I have half the population less than 25 years of age. I have a third of the population less than 18 years of age. Today, where are they spending most of their time? We know where they are. Today, they are part of the college community, student community, and so on and so forth. So they're not part of my target audience. They don't have the money to buy, you know, 30,000 rupee devices, which is what I'd like to do, sell only the 30,000 rupee devices. So what's the use of talking to them? As a marketer, I think one of the challenges is while we cope with the day-to-day -day and the quarterly numbers, et cetera, the reality is we are the custodians of the brand, which needs to last, outlast all of us. And that's where relevance comes in. If I was not to talk to them, five years down the line, four years down the line, when they came into the purchasing audience, into the, uh, into the buying audience, uh, what would Nokia be to them? Would they really relate with the Nokia? Or would they relate to the brand that's been talking to them for the last five years? And that's where relevance drops. Uh, and, and this is not something that happens very gradually. Yeah? As most of us who've been through some good times and some tough times know that it's like, it's like walking into the swimming pool from the shallow end. Yeah? You walk, you walk, you walk, it's all fine, and suddenly the floor just tips. And that's really what happens. That's the lag effect. And now when you put these two data points together, it has a very different implication. Yeah? Uh, therefore, a rhetorical question. Yeah? Adapt or die. And why do I say that? Uh, everybody's heard this famous quote of 50% of all advertising works. If only I knew which 50%. And this is really what happens there. Yeah? Marketing as we know it, television, print, etc., is talking in a monologue. It's a one-way dialogue, which is why I don't know. Sorry, that word is supposed to be listening whether anyone is listening, yeah? That's the challenge. And that's the challenge in any form of communication, any form of uh, marketing, if I may call it. But what happens, therefore? If you look at traditional marketing, you spend big bucks, lots of money, to, it's like a buckshot approach, yeah? The thing just goes out, some part of that buckshot will hit somebody, and it'll work. But instead of that, the advantage of also employing the online space is you can use the power of stories. You give the people the tools and a great story, and they will tell it for you. And that's really the power of the medium. I mean, some people call it social media, but I like to call it storytelling, because that's what really works. Yeah? It's, I mean, I guess it's when you put up a Facebook update and you realize there are no thumbs up or no comments, and you say, what? I mean, everybody's offline, everybody's asleep, what happened? Yeah? But it's when you say an interesting thing and you have 10 likes and 14 comments, you go, yes. Yeah? That's the power of stories, and that's really what even brands need to do. Yeah? That's what engages consumers. While we didn't have much of a choice earlier and it was one way, today there is a choice. And um, going back to consumers that we want to talk to, yeah? This is the space they live in. This is what they are used to. Yeah? They are used to a certain kind of engagement. They are used to a certain mode of consumption, which is why even watching a movie or watching television happens, will happen to a large extent online, because they are in control. Yeah? And that's, that's the important thing. So therefore, digital marketing really, in that sense, is a binary decision. It's an on or off. Yes, I can always do one campaign and have a microsite and you know, run it for a month and feel happy about it, but 
that's not really going to get anything. And in that sense, yeah, it's an all or nothing. Coexistence, engagement, and consumer at the center. Because it is all about dialogue. That's the new communication mode. It's dialogue, it's two-way. So very quickly, like I said, you know, so how do we define consumer engagement? And if it is dialogue, if it is two-way, uh, what we say is we will change the hearts and minds of people who are considering, choose, love, hate, or don't even consider Nokia by transforming the way we connect to them digitally. Because at the end of the day, everybody is a prospective consumer. Today they don't like me because they prefer somebody else. Tomorrow something could happen which they may not like who they, whoever they are using. Who's the brand that's been talking to them? Who's the brand that's continued to engage with them despite their lack of preference or consideration? Yeah? And that's really what, what we believe we need to use this medium for. So let me just give you a very, very one slide example. We just launched the Nokia Lumia range of devices. And uh, we launched it with uh, a Vishal Shaker concert in Ambience Mall right here. It was a three hour event. Now, in three and a half hours, it reached 1.2 million people. Yeah? It trended on Twitter. You can see that 15,000 conversations, et cetera, et cetera. But when you think about it, Three hours, 1.2 million people. Uh, over the last year, the largest reach of any GEC channel in, a, in any week was 6.9 million. Yeah, and just compare the kind of money, the kind of effort, the kind of uh, resource that goes into that. And here you are in just three hours managing something like this, online and offline. Yeah. So. There is the thrill of now, which is, let's just look at what's happening. 120 million video views, 300 million page views, time spent over 100 minutes per month per user. And uh, no, this is not YouTube. This is a mobile video viewing service on the device. Yeah? Six million youngsters voice dating. Yeah? Paying 150 rupees for one day. So, this mobile voice chatting service on their home screen has one icon, which is what's hot today. What's hot or who's hot today? And you pay 150 rupees, and for the day, you can have your photograph there. Yeah, it's like a blind voice chatting, voice chatting service. And the average revenue per user in the telecom industry is 125 to 135 rupees a month. But you have people here paying 150 rupees for one day to get their photograph there because that's what connects them to whoever from that six million base wants to talk to them. That's what they're doing. So there's real-time data insights that allow real-time creative changes. That's the kind of control the marketer has. Rich media content, crowdsourcing. I mean, there's, there's enough which is there in the thrill of now. Looking into the not so far future, yeah, the internet of things, devices talking to devices. That's very much here. Virtual but lifelike experiences of products and services. You know, uh, we say consumers like to see it, experience it, know how whether they're comfortable using something. It can, it's all possible in this medium. You have a virtual, you you know, uh, demo of the device, of the services, of the apps online. They try it, they buy it. Augmented reality, again, something that's very much here. So, not too far in the future, that will become a thing of every day. An audience that has no clue what dial-up internet connection is. That's a reality, yeah? I mean, it's sometimes with very fond memory that I recall that <laughs> sound that used to happen and you just wait for that thing to click and you say, ah, I'm on, yeah? These guys have it too easy. But then that's the advantage we have. Oops, sorry. So therefore, just to quickly close, it's time to end flirting, yeah? Uh, because this is about a long-term relationship. This is about a certain understanding, stability, security, uh, that, that comfort that comes with knowing what you're gonna get, what you're not gonna get, right? Uh, because this is the future, and there's no running away from it. Thank you.
Viral, I'm, uh, I've got a question for you, and then I'll leave it open for the audience. So you, you mentioned that communication is now a uh, dialogue, where consumers are actually able to voice their opinions, they're able to influence your brand message. You talked about your Lumia launch, but even before you launch your phone, so much had been written already about Windows operating system, uh, your smartphone strategy, even product reviews. And, and all of this, I think, touched probably millions of people globally, right? So as a, as a marketer, uh, do you feel a sense of loss of control where in the past you could decide when you would communicate, what you would communicate precisely, and and that reality is getting shaken up completely today? Yep. Um, how many of you have kids? Okay, fair number, so you can explain to the guys next to you who didn't raise their hand. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, I have a 15-year-old daughter and one who's 13, so two handfuls. But there is, there is the stage where suddenly, you know, you say something and say, no, Dad, that's not it. You're talking crap. And you suddenly look at that thing and you realize that she's all grown up. She has a mind of her own. Yeah? There's a point of view. And, and I think it's pretty much the same, which is consumers now talk back. And uh, it's about recalibrating that relationship. So marketing in that sense doesn't start the day one launches the product. It starts the day you decide you want to announce the product. And, and uh, therefore, you're right, there's lots that's been written about it and so on and so forth. And that's part of the marketing uh, plan, so to speak, which is being sure what you want said, who you want to say it, how do you expose that news, who do you expose it to, and uh, therefore, what the consumers pick up will be uh, the right messages. And then you just pray. Thank you. Applause for Vidal. Thank you. Yes.